Welcome all. My name is Bruno Nazari. Today we are here with uh, Thierry Giorgio, 13 times uh, world champion, and like you say in your Twitter account, full time dreamer. <laughs> uh, let's start by a little bit in the end. First, thank you for accepting yeah. the invitation to talk to us. And uh, is this really your last year as an international? Yeah, it seems so. Yeah, it, it was a very long process, and uh, uh, I took my decision during the fall last year. And uh, I think if I had been world champion in uh, Stromstad, probably I would have uh, already stopped. But I felt like I really wanted to to do a last season and try once more uh, to do a perfect race at world championship. So. I get this uh, b very big motivation and uh, for sure uh, it will be very strange to... Uh, it's, it's a special feeling to, to stop my career this year because it's always the last races, the last time I come to Portugal, the last time I went to Alicante, so it feels really special. But I'm really happy about this uh, decision because like uh, I had two options, either I I will uh, keep it secret just for myself and uh, tell it uh, publicly after World Championships but uh, I decided to sell it very early so people uh, could prepare in a way and also for me it meant like I would get a lot more pressure and I think at this time of my career it's really what I need and uh, at least at the moment I feel like uh, I'm really motivated and uh, I really want to do so well in the next uh, four months. Yes, and looking back at your career, your first World Championship was in 1997 in uh, Greenstad, Norway. So 20 years later, 2017, we are here in the village, and I'm sitting down with a 13 times World Champion. Did you ever imagine this? No, no, it was really unexpected because uh, when I was uh, 18 in 90s in France, it was a very small sport and uh, we were really, really far from the best and uh, of course, uh, secretly, I always had the dream to, to become the world best, but uh, to be honest, I really felt like the Scandinavian runners were too strong and it, it would take forever to catch uh, to catch them, but uh, little by little, uh, every season uh, we were coming closer and uh, with this training group in Saint-Étienne we, we did uh, really big work, especially when we were juniors and uh, yeah, and finally, of course, uh, you know, it feels really incredible, like uh, the career I had, but uh, I'm more like always looking in front than more than in the back, so yeah, probably when I will stop, I will uh, I will take uh, like a little of time to look what I have achieved. But at the moment, I I really don't care. I want the next one. Yeah, and uh, looking back, you said to Per Forsberg that um, that first World Running Daily Championship was all about the experience of being there, being uh, able to watch some of the world's best at the time. You said like uh, Jorgen Matterson who was already a, a vet, almost a veteran, yeah. he was more or less the same age as you are. Yeah. And so you were 18 then, and uh, nowadays it's impossible for an 18 year old from France to make it into the walking world. It's very difficult. Yeah. So, what advice? Because there are a lot of 18 year old talent runners in France right now. What is the advice you give them? Yeah, for me it's like uh, it has been an incredible journey and um, what was really important was uh, as you said I was starting very early and uh, I really tried to learn from the best at the beginning and then I developed myself and like did it my, uh, my way and uh, so I think like there are several uh, stages during a career. The first part, you should really like try to learn as much as possible from the best, try to copy what they are doing. But little by little, you you know better your personality and try to to find what will work best for you. That's really the most important. And if I 
see all this from distance. I think it was really important for me to have a long-term goal, which was like to become world best. But for sure, like uh, if you take a guy who is uh, 18, it won't take uh, one month of training to really reach uh, absolute uh, top level. It will more take probably 10 years of uh, hard work, so it's a very long journey and you need a lot of motivation because there will be up and downs all the time, so um, you, you need a very strong dedication and uh, you should know before entering the game that it will take a long time, so you, you should have a strong desire to succeed and also the it's not, not only about having a dream, it's also about doing daily something to, to get closer from your, your dream. So I have always seen like every day as a small uh, step where I had a specific goal and I was trying to, to be better than uh, the previous day. So it's really important like to have this large scale but also always to come back what I will do in the next hour to, to get better. So it's really important as a junior like to focus on the coming training and uh, try to become better. So that's a big good advice not only for French but also yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. You talk a little bit before also about Saint-Étienne and about yeah. the Pôle de France. Yeah. How important was that Pôle de France system for your development as an athlete? So it was everything for us because like uh, you should really understand like uh, uh, French oil doing was uh, very weak in the 90s and uh, we didn't have a very strong club and sport culture. So and uh, of course uh, Sweden and uh, Norwegian were up on the top and uh, we had a lot to do to catch them. So the only chance we had was to put all our strength together on the same place and luckily we, we have a very good terrain in France and uh, so we put all our best athletes with my father who, was, uh, who had uh, some incredible energy for this group. So he was dragging us uh, as much as he could and uh, with François Gonon, Damien Renard, my brother, we were like uh, training every day together, competing against each other and, and it was so important. I, I really believe like you need a group to, to improve because if you train alone it's really really hard, especially if you start from, from a place where the, the orienting culture is quite weak, so it's really, yeah, Paul France was uh, a big thing for me and for my career. Yes, and you said your father was the, the, behind the first Paul de France in Saint Etienne, and uh, we talked before, and I told you that I had the pleasure of uh, assisting some workshops in Spain with him as uh, presenting the so called method Stefanoise. So he, he was really passionate, he, he, he has been retired for Olympiading for quite some time, but still I could feel the passion and the motivation that he has for the sport. That method Stefanoise for me and for the other Portuguese and Spanish that were, were like a breakthrough. And I don't think no one has ever imagined creating those types of uh, exercises and uh, like the need to train every day with the map was incredible. How important was that for your... Everybody recognized that you are probably the best map reader in the world. Yeah, it was... Uh, of course, my uh, father has been uh, a key person in my uh, development and his uh, dedication and uh, his will to, um, to bring us to the top was uh, incredible and uh, he was so eager that he was uh, quickly learning all the Scandinavian language to, to be able to get the basics from uh, all those uh, orientation books you, you find in uh, Scandinavia. But then, we, what was really important as well was to adapt it to French culture and uh, he had this philosophy of um, which was no training with the map, which I think was really good, so it meant like 
lot of technical uh, trainings, a lot of uh, hours with the map, especially when we were juniors. And uh, it was so important for us, like, uh, really, like, I said it very often when you want to achieve something in uh, editorial drawing, you need a really uh, strength somewhere. So it can be a physical strength, a technical strength, or, of course, on, on World Championships, it helps a lot also if you have a really strong uh, mental strength. But uh, so for me, I knew after some years, like I, with all those amount of technical training, that really like reading the map was one of my strengths, and it will be I will seldom do a mistake. So my confidence at the start was really good because I knew I will. Uh, not make a mistake, so I could uh, really f feel confident and it's really important uh, when you compete at World Championships.